Hi and welcome to the preview show. We're previewing the Dundee United game, which is Sunday. Uh, so welcome to yourself, Brian, and welcome to Alex. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, look, I knew that was going to happen. If we were both going to wait a second and then both talk at the same time. So I'll, just come to, I'll come to you first of all, Brian. So the night after the Dortmund away game, how are you feeling? Yeah. Still buzzing, are we? Yeah, just when that fourth goal went, and I just it was almost the sort of comedy stuff. You just thought this is this is ridiculous. We shouldn't be in this position against a team like Dortmund. But I mean, goodness knows how. John picked a man of the match out of that because I I pretty much try to award it to everybody because yeah. try and pick one guy out of that whole team to give man of the match was so unfair because everybody played their part. Everybody just came to the party and wow, what a result. I mean, I waited Dortmund in the West Fallen Stadium as I used to know it. I mean, fantastic result. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I spoke to you the other day, Alex, after the tactics pod. It was all fair, right enough. But you did say to me, <laughs> and I, uh, I wish I recorded it now, but you did say to me, we would win, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I watch a bit of German football myself, so I know Dortmund are slow. And, and, and also, I know what Morales is like on a European night. He absolutely loves it. Um, but then, just to reverse it, I said at the time, I hope you're not recording in case we lose. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, it kind of evens out a little bit that, that we weren't recording. But yeah, I, I um, look, we're only halfway there. I, you know, you don't want to brag about this too much and say we were going to yeah. win because if they go and beat us at home, then, then it's a different story and we're all, you know, hiding for weeks. Yeah. And I think this morning, Brian, the pours, I think we'll be over to the back in Glasgow now. Don't know if we've been this morning or not, but they must be on a high, getting, even getting in the game on Sunday. They must be thinking, even themselves, yeah. wow, because they probably went there last night in the Dortmund, the Dortmund game thinking, we'll just give it a go here with nothing to lose because I've got Dortmund's favourites. But they actually blown everybody away and watching on Hargreaves last night and watching other news and even seeing some people, some famous celebrities on Twitter. A tweet on Twitter tweeting, uh, I'm getting tongue tied this morning. They were mentioning it as well, and it's like it's. I'm not saying it's it's a shock, but it sent a shock around a lot of people, hasn't it? The result Rangers got. It's not like we didn't. It's, we've seen Rangers beat ben, play well against Benfica, Porto. We've seen Lisbon in years of Leon, but last night was just was very unexpected. Not maybe for some Rangers fans because we always have a small hope we win, but a lot of people outside Rangers were thinking, "Wow, where did that come from?" It was. I think it's the manner of the win that shocked everybody. Um, going three 0 up away from home to Dortmund, you know, and then they when they got the goal, everybody's like, "Oh, here we go! Here's Dortmund arriving. They're going to come back." And then we quickly got a force. So yeah, it, I think it's just more the manner of the result that shocked everybody. Um, but as you say, that this isn't just a one-off game that we've beat a team away from home. We beat Braga away. You know, we've come away with some good results. So it's not a. It's not just like a, a shock result in the in the sense of Europe, but I think the the size of the team that we've beaten is just the difference this time. I mean, Dortmund are well, quite rightly, sort of European royalty, you know, ex Champions yeah. League winners, you know. So, and r regardless of that, if Haaland was playing or not last night, they've still got a fantastic squad and a fantastic team. And well, just to get a, as as a lot of people were hoping. Even a, a score draw or a slight loss would have been okay last night, you know? Yeah, that, that's one thing I was going to mention, Alec. A couple of people, was, I was talking, watching BT Sport last night after the Celtic game had finished, just to see for the, the high, sh high show coming on. And they mentioned it on there, like they were saying, oh, Celtic could be out of this or two goals. Or Celtic are still in this, only two goals behind. But then they turn around and say, I can't remember who the guy was commentating. He was sitting in the studio with the other two, but he said, Rangers. Are only two goals ahead. Dortmund are still in it, something to myself. And then we mentioned the Haaland as well. Is that not a bit of a Slater Rangers plus? I mean, Inga Haaland, we all know how good he is, right? He's probably one of the best strikers in the world on for him. He's up there and he's going to cost millions of pounds, so I wants to get him next season. But if he was playing or not, I mean, that, that Dortmund side is a quality side. And I've seen other tweets from people saying, well, if Rangers can beat him. So, so could we, but football doesn't work on it. I think Rangers just deserve the credit in last night's performance, Haaland or not, how well we played. We went and get the result, which was very unexpected, but we got it off our own back, no, because of anything else. Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of people will be harsh on Rangers, and that's not to say they'll say Rangers were poor or anything. They'll go for 
the whole Dortmund weren't good rather than Rangers were superb, which is, you know, it is harsh on the players because, listen, I think I said this when we came on, Dortmund weren't brilliant, but it takes any team a spell of possession on the, like, you know, a bit of time on the ball to get through the gears and Rangers didn't allow them that. Um, and I think that's where the credit is. Dortmund couldn't be as good as even they wanted, like they wanted to, or even half as good as they wanted to, because Rangers didn't allow them to. And um, like you said, there's still there's still ninety minutes at Ibrox, and and that's a massive ninety minutes. And Haaland, for me, the only thing I would say is he is like in terms of you know not in terms of ability, but in terms of likeness. He's like our Morelos. When we're without Morelos up front, we, we kind of seem a little bit lost. But that's not to say Dortmund don't have quality players who should be creating goals and should be scoring goals. Um, and that's exactly why they brought Malin in was, you know, in case Erling Haaland had to go out, in, in case he in case either he was injured, sidelined, or, or they were going to sell him because albeit he's still there, yeah. he won't be for very long. He is a world-class talent. And, um, yeah, adding him to the squad, okay, Let's say they're two 0 up from the first leg, and and you're adding him to the squad. You're going okay. Dortmund are probably gonna go through. When you're two goals behind, it's a different game because one, they have to come to a full Ibrox, which it, which is gonna be, you know, unbelievable atmosphere. They've got to come there and they've got to go from the get go and get the two goals as early as possible. And there's no there's no away goals rule, which it hurts us a little bit because I can't yeah. see them scoring four. Um. But there is no Wiggles rule. I still think, you know, Rangers are going to go, listen, these guys have to come on to us. If we play like we did, and, and don't go defensive, don't sit back and invite them on. If we play like we did, I don't, I can't see Dortmund beating us. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting next week, Brian McGinn, that's be probably more confidence than I ever thought it would be. But it is only half time, and I think Joe will drum that into players to say, listen, we're only halfway here. We have to make sure we're there at the end of the game. But on a Sunday, Brian, against Dundee United, who first game of the season, first time we went there at the start of the season, we yeah. lost and we weren't very good that day. Hmm. Now, Sunday's a difficult game for us because we're coming off of this. Yeah. I know the more morale will, be, morale will be high, but United are going to make it difficult because for some reason against us, they always do. Even yeah. the Ibrox and they brought all the young players, they made it quite difficult. So, are you looking... And Sunday and think anything less, I think we'll win it easily. I think it will be a hard game. Oh, it's definitely going to be a hard game. I mean, I'm just looking at the results of the last five games. The, the last game, the, the last goal they conceded, I think, was away to Celtic, and that's five games ago. So they've had four clean sheets in a row. So they're obviously, they obviously know how to shut up shop. So it's a case, I mean, the, the, the team will be very interesting. I, I would imagine there'll be a, a few changes, obviously, with in the midfield, especially. I don't think Jack will play. I think he'll be given a well earned rest after his. Heroics last night because he was immense. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be a tough game. United always make it tough. We've, we've very rarely went up there and scudded them, so it's it's going to be a very difficult game. Do you think we'll go up there and dominate, Alec, or do you think we'll go up there? I don't. I don't. Um, I think the game of all games, you know, albeit this season, we were coming off the back of the Malmo one, and I think the second leg was in everybody's heads. And then when it got to the second leg, the Dundee United game was in everybody's heads. For me, Looking back over a game that takes a fair representation is the 2-1 we beat them when Tavernier scored the insane free kick last season. Because last yeah. season, we, we were on an unbelievable roll. And, and no team seemed to be, at that point in the season, no team seemed to be able to stop us. As soon as we went one the lap, you know, you thought, right, that's it, game over. Because yeah. we don't concede many. And to be fair to Dundee United, uh, I'm not going to be saying that much. To be fair to them, they were unfortunate to come away with nothing that day. Um, you know, Rangers, I would say, deserved the win, but Dundee United, of their of the game they played, were probably unfortunate to come away with nothing. Um, so yeah, they they have a good side. They have a, you know, they they took a point from Parkhead earlier this season. They should have come away with another one. Um, and they, you know, in the one 0 loss to to Rangers in in December as well, they they were. They were good. They were solid defensively. They don't concede many goals. Okay, they, they lose a few games. Benji Seacrest is a, a quality goalkeeper and yeah. it does take a, a special strike to beat him now and again. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them a few times. United, they're a hard-working side, Brian. They don't... Um, they're not the best attacking side I've seen, but obviously they've signed Tony Watt, who adds a different dimension. Yeah. They've, they've also got Nicky Clark. There's a lot of hard work out with the penalty box and they've got a boy Hartsmith of the park who can score goals by 
but we all know they're a hard working side and Tom Coates has got into a formation where they're well disciplined. They work for each other and they're hard to break down, which we've we've seen with their stats and we've seen with the results recently. But they don't score a lot of goals either. No, uh, that that's one thing I have noticed that you know they're they they win a lot of one nils or two you know two one at the best. They haven't scored many more than two, so they're not very they're not prolific up front. But when you're when they're keeping clean sheets like they are just now, it's uh, you don't have to be. So it's it, we we've always Tannadice has never been favourable to us. We've had a, a lot of good results up there, but we've. Over a consistent period of doing, we've went up there and not lost for a good few games. So it's, yeah. as you say, they're a hard-working team. But you would like to think that after last night's result, they're going to go into that game flying and confidence. I mean, Borna reborn, Kent flying again. Um, you know, a lot of guys that were slightly out of form with us are starting to come into form, Bassi as well. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, I mean, we've got a lot of players, Alex, in the sidelines that we could bring in for Sunday. Do you, yeah. do you see many changes? Or do you see maybe five or six in, five or six out? Do you think it was as many as that? Yeah, um, I, I can see changes. I don't I don't know how many. I can see changes. Just to say something, I've just seen the tweet. I didn't actually notice. And I've just seen the tweet. Happy birthday, John Lundstrom. Yeah. Uh, I, hope it, I hope it's a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it will be a really good one after last night's goal, but... Yeah, uh, well, it's just his performance, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I can see changes. I think um, I'll actually go against what Brian said. I think I think Lundstrom will be dropped, and I think Jack will play. Um, I think Jack and Lundstrom were both brilliant last night, and and you know one of them has to to be rested to play next Thursday. But I, I think Jack is the guy that is less droppable of the two. I mean, can't take anything away from Lundstrom, but the di- the dimensions that Jack brings to our squad is just brilliant. I think a few players will be dropped and it, it'll maybe be, you know, about keeping them for the second leg or it will be about, you know, we can get rotation. There's other players who can get fit, can get in here and we can still win this game. You know, there's a guy that's missing from the squad last night, um, Fashion Sakala, who he seems to be a bit, you know, he's got the talent, but sometimes his feet are too quick for his brain. Yeah. He, he's a good player and he has quality. You know, if you if there's one guy that's that's say he's eighty percent, and you're you're thinking right, well, I don't want to get him, get him a knock because we've got a hard run of games coming up, um, it, Dortmund included, is is maybe Kent. You know, maybe you put Sakal in for him or Arfield. Arfield is another guy who is extremely hard working, and you know he has got a lot of miles in the leg, especially over the the last couple of games. So so maybe Sakal plays off of, of Morales on the other side if Morales plays. Um and and potentially just potentially I, I probably not you know if it's Jared it's a hundred percent is McLaughlin um it's I don't think so personally myself but y- you never know I mean Jared used to chop and change every single game this is the kind of game that off the back of a European game and and you know it's a different a different experience and and McLaughlin is is better with his feet he's better on the ball mm-hmm. than McGregor he's just not a better shot stopper. I mean, um, last night's last night's sorry, uh, Alec, last night's bench, Brian. I mean, we had on it Stephen Davis, Glenn Kamara, Aaron Ramsey. Well, that's what uh, I was just talking about. Diallo. I mean, you mentioned McLaughlin there, Alex, but McLaughlin wasn't on the bench last night. No. It was Jay, Jay Holcraft. So, I mean, you've got Ramsey, who's obviously we bought, we brought him in to play. I mean, we know how good a player he is and he yeah. can be. Diallo, we obviously brought him in and to play, and he's not had many minutes. Kamara and Davis, so. They could be wholesome changes from front yeah. and middle to front, Brian. Do you see yeah. that happening? I would I wouldn't be surprised. I mean I kinda I kinda get the but I think we've got to manage Jack just now. I, I don't think we can play him ninety minutes week after week, you know, especially midweek weekend, midweek weekend. We've just got to be careful with him because obviously he's not long back from a serious injury. So yeah. <clears throat> I mean when you see when you see the names of Davis, Kamara and Ramsey. I mean, to think they weren't even starting last night and, you know, that's the sort of quality and depth we've got now. So, I mean, I, I dare say they wouldn't be too happy about missing last night. So they're, they'll they be itching at the bit to get going and, you know, to, to get back. And, well, if, if they play well at the weekend, could that change the manager's thoughts for the, the midweek game? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's whole, wholesale changes. I really wouldn't, just to give guys a rest and a... A bit of a uh, a break. 
mean, one thing I done last night, Alex, Gio went to a back three. And the yeah. last, what, 25 minutes, half an hour, it brought on James Hans, who I really like James Hans as a player. I think he's got a big future ahead of him, be it Rangers or somewhere else. But I think he's got he done well. And I don't know, would they try that tomorrow? Because we've, we've said that a few times in the tactics pod that we could see him doing a back three once everybody's yeah. fit. But he went last night. I mean, didn't he look that bad when we played the back three? Well, I know people say it's a back five, but Tav can get forward so well. Yeah. Barisic looked maybe more comfortable there because he do as much defending. Would tomorrow be a time to try that? Or do you think it's... No. no? I, I think... Um... Yesterday, the guy thinks, you know, we're 4-1 we're up away to Dortmund and we've got a second leg to come. He, he went a little bit more defensive, which is why the three's in there. It, it's a three in possession, a five out of possession because you've got the two that come back. But obviously, going forward, they're not going to stand back and do nothing. that They can bomb forward. And that, that that's probably quite helpful, having them going further forward. Uh, it, it isn't a bad thing for us. And I, I can't see him playing three... More because I don't think the players are, are ready to suit the system that he exactly wants. Because you could see just a little bit when he, when Sands comes on. Uh, it's not Sands' fault at all. I think it's rather unfortunate that it just didn't click perfectly last night. I didn't think it went bad. But for the first five minutes when he comes on and, and people have changed position, it kind of just seemed to be... The ball seemed to be bobbling about a lot more. He moved into the centre of the back. Yeah. The, the two back centre backs. That's where he was comfortable playing in New York. Yeah. yeah. So that's where, you know, everybody else around that had to change a little bit and, and they were finding their feet. Um, and, and, and Sam slotted right in and I thought he was fine, but it just took a little bit of, while, a little bit of time to get that to be fine again and, and then kick on and... You know, have a bit more of the ball and a bit more possession. So I don't think you'll start with a three. Um, why not start Sands over the likes of um Bassi because Bassi was brilliant last night and and Sands can do a good job there. That's another one. You know, there's many people that can come into that squad and and we can come away with. There's probably eight nine changes you can put into that squad and you're still going right. That squad should be well strong enough to win this game. I mean, one point I really mentioned yet is Big Phil Brian. Yeah, and he'll come in. I think. I really do. Um, I, well, if he if he wasn't out of the Euro squad last night, he would have. I think he would have played last night. But I mean, I I, I think Calandra will come back in because, well, he's he's our best defender, um, and he, it he, I just feel he makes such a difference in that defence. He gives everybody a bit of a, a confidence because he is a far better defender than a uh, Bassi. And there's no that's no slight on Bassi because Bassi's done well. Yeah. But no, Big Phil, I think he'll come back in definitely, 100%. I think I will be changing myself. It's difficult to see who... I can see... Um, Zukowski? No, I can... He was even on the bench. I don't think he's registered anyway, but I can see him um, leaving Aribo, Lundstrom and uh, Jack out. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing in Ramsey, Kamara and Davis. Do you know that way? Because it's not really going to disrupt the baby play. I so, just feel Lundstrom and Jack have played that well recently. He's maybe going to keep me man as he's preferred to because John Lundstrom's come from being, we should sell him in January to be in this yeah. play we're now all depending on. It just shows you how football fans can be fickle at times because a couple of weeks ago it was like, get him off the race ball, who's looking for him there, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But his performances over the last couple of games have been really, really good. I mean, there's many matches in a few of them. But last night, he looked very comfortable. He's the strike for his goal. I mean, I had the net before the keeper. I think they didn't keep a cut it coming away back out. But yeah. since Ryan Jack stepped next to him, the two of them just look like they've played together for years, don't they, Brian? Yeah, I mean, it's. I was I was definitely on the, the, the Lundstrom out train. You know, I just couldn't see a way back from him. I was just, he just seemed lost. And yeah, I was... But I mean, what a turnaround! I mean, as you say, I think Jack coming in has been the foil that he's needed. Uh, Jack's just came in with that calm and influence, and he's he's just slotted in. And yeah, as I say, I I really didn't see a way back for Lundstrom at all. But it's it's nice to see because obviously we spent a fair bit of money on him wages wise, so yeah. it's nice to get a return on that. And yeah, I mean, he he's he seems to be oozing through games now, and it's nice to see him flying into tackles now because he's a big lad and it's nice to see somebody in the middle you know going going in for one of these one or two of these tackles I think it's been harsh on Lundstrom Alex whereas he's come in for Sheffield United okay a lot of games he didn't have a lot of possession more out of possession he had to play but 
he's come in with a big expectation. And sometimes it can take players to time to settle for personal reasons, family reasons. They're just going to get into adapting to a new way of playing and a new style of playing. A new country, basically. So, yeah. I think we've been quick to judge. I think he's but we but we made the scapegoat for Malmo. And I yeah, it, it's hard, isn't it? Because when um, you're a fan of such a massive club and, and you have such expectations, players need to kind of get a run in straight away. Uh, and and Lundstrom had a difficult start because obviously he had a, a poor game at Malmo, and then obviously he gets sent off against Alashkert. And and you know by that point, you're taking you know. It, if we win all of those games comfortably, that kind of goes under the radar a little bit. Yeah. But because we had a little bit of a an off start to the season, okay, Malmo one was a real shock. Um, we beat Ashker one 0 It should have should have been more, etc. You know, you're you're sitting here going, if that's a di- a different player, if that's somebody who's been here a few years, it might go a little bit under radar. Going, okay, he's going through a tough spell, but because he's just got here and people are expecting somebody of his quality to hit the floor running um, yeah he's, he's maybe been harshly judged on but at the end of Gerrard's tenure and I said this to you on one of the, the tactical podcasts he had good games and it wasn't the quality of what he produced in the games that, that showed that he could fit into Rangers to me it was his, his conferences where he says I think we drew one all the hearts at home and he scored the only goal it was an absolute peach and, and he comes out and they go okay well that's your your first goal for Rangers, you've got man in the match, how do you feel? And he went, rubbish. I, I don't care. I don't care that's my first goal or anything because we didn't win. Yeah. And that was when it kind of clicked for me that the guy, you know, he's, he, okay, he's had a tough time and he's, he's finally starting to adapt. Um, and so, yes, I think he, he had a future. And then, obviously, a bit of change in the managerial and and like we mentioned, every single tactical bit, there's there's subtle tweaks that happen every week because it's not Geo's system, but he's smart enough to know if you change system, whole change system from one to the next one in one week, it's not going to work. So he's making subtle little tweaks so that the players yeah. can continue what they're doing without it being disrupted. And that it almost meant that Lundstrom was back in the pecking order because he'd worked so hard to get up to the front of what it was. And and he was, you know, debatably going to be starting. So there was no, you know, there was nobody in that the midfield that went, yep, you're on, you're you're writing him down before um, the last game's finished for the next game's team sheet. Uh, so then Lundstrom's like, you know, for, for then, Lundstrom had to build his way back up with Gio and Gio's team into the starting 11. And, and now again, that he's got there, especially after, you know, the disarray in, in the east end of Glasgow. He comes in, everybody knows we need a performance. The lineup comes out, a lot of people are looking at Lundstrom going, this is his, you know, do or die day. And and he, he showed up and he has showed up ever since. So, yeah, I think we were slightly harsh on Lundstrom. But at the same time, now that we're seeing the quality that he has, it, it's, you know, it's only about looking forwards rather than backwards. Yeah. I think you have to give Gio a of praise here, Brian, because he's brought Lundstrom in Probably from obviously we don't know what to do in training, but by the looks of us, he's brought him in for the call. But he came in after the Celtic game. He probably had none to lose coming after the Celtic game because the fans were down. Mm-hmm. We were all angry, would I say? Mm-hmm. We were all angry after. It wasn't so much the defeat, I think it was the way we get beat we were angry more about than getting beat. Because you can take a defeat, Brian, if you think, well, we, we, we put effort in there, we were unlucky, yeah. but we didn't. But he's come in, he's brought Jack back. Morelos has come back in because he wasn't playing the games. And these three players have seen me galvanised, I must say, in our season, because we were, we were top of top, like most of it anyway. Mm-hmm. But we seem to be playing with a total different, I must say, we are against, but more confidence, we a bit more swagger about us. Swagger, yeah, that's the word I was going to use. We're using, we're, we're definitely, we've definitely got our swagger back. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been at all surprised if Lundstrom had left in January because... There was, you know, everybody the, the the sort of the jungle drums were going, and you know, lunch from this, lunch from that. But fair, as you say, fair play to Geo for maybe putting an arm around him and saying, "Look, it's tough." You know, well, he's he's been there and done it as well, so he's got to use his experience and say, "Look, I've been there, done that. I've I've started it. I've started it, uh, big big games in big teams and not, not done well at the start." And you know, he's 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 obviously just put an arm around him and hopefully. Well, well, clearly that's worked. So, I mean, yeah. But as you say, it, it 
<laughs> there's bigger players than John Lundstrom keeping the Rangers in field. So I'm going to say you, Brian, you're probably you're all the same age as myself, but you remember Mark Hetley when he came. Yeah, he yeah, struggled. His first, first season at Rangers, his confidence was poor. He was not playing well whatsoever. A lot of people are on his back saying, what the, have we signed right. here? But then, he got his confidence on somebody. I think he scored a goal. He got his confidence. Him and McCoy's clicked. Mm-hmm. And he just went, but every season it just grew and grew and grew. Yeah, I think I think I've seen something about that when Hately said, Johnston got an injury. Mo Johnston got an injury and then McCoy came in out of the cold because obviously it was Johnston and Hately. Yeah. And yeah, that's where... Hately Ali was on the bench all the time, remember? Ali was on the yeah. bench constantly. He was fighting with Graham Soonis and yeah. at one point he even had a cardboard out sitting on the bench, didn't he? Take the mic out yeah. the manager. And sometimes, I'm not saying... confidence. Yeah, but sometimes being the right place, it's being the right place at the right, time, the right time and getting his game back, John Lynch, we all know he's not a bad player, right? We all know mm. he's... Don't play an English Premiership if you're a bad player. You, yeah. you can obviously make a few appearances, but not the way he has. Yeah. And I think... I we seen the best of him. Just a guy now. I think he could be a mainstay in our team for a couple of seasons because if he's a base point last, obviously none is wanting to leave at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. No, I mean there's no the way he's playing. There's no reason why he can't. Um, you know he's 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 chi- well. I'm not saying he's chipping in with a few goals now, but you know he's 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 got shooting boots. I think if he just used them a bit more, then he he might come out with a few more goals. Um, but no, I mean I would. It's 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 a nice turnaround because I think everybody well not everybody but I mean a lot of people were I wouldn't say quite hounding him out but it it wasn't looking good for the guy but I mean yeah it's it's been a great as I said before I think Jack's made the difference with Lundstrom I think he's just given him a bit of confidence yeah I think I like just the whole team in general a bit more we look more a bit more fluency in our game in the last few weeks yeah we don't look team just, as passive yeah. Um, question for the host do you think that the 3-0 loss to Celtic was because I have I am of the opinion and I've seen a few on Twitter was potentially the best thing that's happened to us for a while the light bulb moment the wake up call I'll answer that after I left the lead trophy <laughs> <laughs> okay okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I think it could turn out to be, I think, maybe in that game we a wee bit more confidence than maybe we should have because they've not beat us for a good few seasons, but they were up for the game and we weren't. And like I said earlier, I don't think it was getting beat it was a problem. I think it was a manner of getting beat because yeah. the game was finished in the first half. It was a bit like that Hubs game when goals came out and said stuff and he got lambasted for it, but that was very that was probably worse than the Hubs game, to be fair, just because who we were playing. But I think it sunk into Jill as well because at the time we were questioning... Some his play, but I think he has made tweets like you said, and I think Kamara. I'm not saying he's a he's, Kamara, Glenn Kamara is not a bad player in the stretch, but I think he's running empty at times. I think with Jack there and Lundstrom there, we're more direct. They don't seem to go sideways or backways as much, and they both can like to go forward and both play a pass forward when the when the, the opportunity is there. So I think that's changed, but I think just things like that, confidence. And just everything seemed to click at this moment in time. I think after the Celtic game, we had two big games, didn't we, against the Edinburgh sides. Mm-hmm. And we all thought we'd drop points here. But it won the two games quite comfortably. And I think the players have realised we're not actually a bad side. We had a bad performance, but we're not a bad side. And I think hopefully that has turned. Because I don't think Celtic are as good as what they think they are. Listen, I don't think we're a great side. I think I don't Last season, I didn't think we were as good as what we were either. But I think this season we can prove we are a good side when we're on it. And we are a yeah. good side when we want to be. I think some of the times it is a mentality thing. And you can say this player's not playing well or that player. But I think a lot is to do with mindset at times. And I think if you get a mindset right, we are the, we are the best football side in Scotland. But yeah. that doesn't win you the league. You have to yeah, prove that, well, I think I think last season is the one that you think... Listen, we were good. You have to say we were good to go on beating you. You're not. That's, you're not a bad side. No, you're not. Cel- Celtic made it look a lot better. You know, um, they did. They they really did because of how how poor they were. Um, so Celtic made made us look better than we were. And, and although we were a good side, their poor side made us look better. And 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 it made people think that all of a sudden, this massive gap that they had on us, all of a sudden, we're going to 
flip it on its head and we're going to do that and be beating them by that many points every single season. Um, which was the was the thing that you know um, they still have the they still have the financial side over us. Um, we win we win the league, and and that brings it closer. That brings the gap, the divide closer financially. The ability our players have, there's no doubt that they should be able to go and win the league. But it's going to be tighter this year because Celtic has spent what 35, 40 million on players. They've brought a couple of players in on loan. Their side is going to get better. They've brought a new manager and their side is going to get better. That's what we have to do though too. We have to adapt and we have to improve because you can't sit still. When you sit still, that's when you know the gaps start to, to open up and, and you're papering over cracks. And and luckily, I think having Lundström come in, um, albeit at the start of the season it didn't seem to click, and, and now having Jack back, he is like a new signing. Having Sakala firing, having these players going, okay, they were only on a free that's the kind of guys that bridge the gap between now and the end of the season. Um, now that you know we've got Gio in instead of Gerard, and the system's slightly changing. And then in the summer you go, okay, Gio, here's your budget because you've done this last season. You've got th- this is your budget. Tell us what kind of team you want. Speak to Ross Wilson. Go work together. Build your team now because there's probably going to be a few sales in the summer. But between now and the end of the the, the season, I said this before the Hearts game. I said. I'm I'm sitting here going, if we win every single match one nil, pe- people are gonna go, Wow, that could have been a bit better and, and, and your heart's not gonna take it very well. But because he's not got his it's cliche to say, but his his side, you know, he's still working with Jared's team. It's a good team, it's not his team. That means, you know, you take dirty wins, you take the little wins that, that should be potentially better if the team's clicking perfectly. But to get us firing and, and going again and get the goals included like he has so far, and, and I mean, you've got the Hearts game, we win 5-0, it's the one that everybody's worried because Hearts were the best of the rest, and now we're going to beat Dortmund. Now you're looking going, you want these performances again, and, and you want that against the United, and you want it to continue. Yeah. And and realistically, if we can go in and keep this form between now and the end of the season, you know people dip in and out of form, and, and it's a hard to keep between such a long spell. There's no reason why we shouldn't go and, and, and win the league. No, I agree with you. I think it's just, we take every game as it comes. We do need yeah. consistency. And we're going to win, man. Hey, Brian, speak to Al McGregor. He's been an object to abuse this season. For, no, I mean abuse, but just you put a criticism in the yeah. game for the mistakes he's made, especially against Ross County. But last night, I'm not going to blame him for any goals. We're two good strikes. It might have been first one. I mean, people say they might have got Bell and shot, but I think... It was just too, the shot was too, just a, too good a shot. He was never going to get to the second one. It was just one of the goals, a ball dipped through him. It was a great strike as well. Yeah. But to me last night, his fire was back in. You see him shouting and balling at folk. I know it does, he make saves. But I think when Alan's like that, he performs better. Yeah, but I think he's very much, I've always sort of likened him to Morelos in a way. When the angry McGregor's there, he plays better. And it's the same with Morelos. When he's got this sort of, the edge on him, he's a lot better. Um, but yeah, as you say, that two goals last night. I think the second one, he didn't even move. He just sort of, no. he just sort of watched it go in because it was that good a strike. So yeah, I mean, it's nice to see the 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 ang- well, not angry, but you know the the, the commanding sort of the fire on the belly, McGregor. Vocal, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the vocalness out of McGregor because that's what he's good at. You know, if so- even if somebody does something that is not massively a big problem, he'll. He'll be on them like a ton of bricks. So would you and say, by, is, that, is this Alan Swan song as he's drinking they'll be back next season? I can't see it. I really can't. I mean, what, he's just turned 40. Um, <laughs> you, you, you can keep... You, the, the romantic side of you wants to keep him, but the head's got to rule eventually. And I just think he would... I think if he won the league this year, I think he would dip out. I really do. I think I think he only stayed last year after he won the league purely because he thought we'd qualify for the Champions League and he'd have one more crack at that. Um, but no, I mean, we've got to start looking forward and looking at man- uh, goalkeepers in the future now. You know, we've got to we've got to start future planning the goalkeeper situation because it's it's a it's a situation it's it's a position that we've always been very blessed with in the in the past. You know, Gorham, Kloss. Um, McGregor as well, so I mean, it's, it's not a position that we've struggled with, you know. Um, but no, I, I, I can't see him staying on after this season. I really can't. Well, I want you. I like a good goalkeeper, and having a good keeper, then 
everybody's confident. Defence yeah. outwards, if you've got a good keeper there. But we'll go in the game on Sunday, Alex. We'll go with you. So, what's your back five on Sunday? Um, yeah, my back five is McGregor is in goals for for me. The, the McGregor, Tavernier, Barisic, Goldson, and Hollander. And yes, you you Brian. Yeah, I yeah I you go with that. Yeah, no, I think the only change will maybe be Hollander in for Bassi, and that'll be it. Yeah, I kind of think that myself. That's only change that'll come in. Bassi for Alejandro for Bassi, but I don't think it'll be much more. So, who's your midfield two has been playing recently? Uh, I, I would go for. I think, and I, I know you want to you want to manage him, and you you don't want to do it. I think it's going to be Jack and Kamara. And yourself, Brian. I think we're going to have a bit of a change in the midfield. So I think it'll be Kamara and. Davis well, I'll be different again I think it'll be Kamara I think John Lundstrom will play because he's done a lot of football this season he has fit and I think he'll play Ryan Jacks probably just get more managed because of the issues he's had recently so he's not done a lot of football so I think they'll keep him for the more the games they think we really really need him for because if he was a fully fit Ryan Jack you'd play him every week but but you, we also always in the back of your mind, every tackle you're in for, everything you think, oh no, I hope he's okay, because that's how important they are. So I think it'll be yeah. Kamara and Lundstrom. I, if I had to pick myself, it'd be Davis and Lundstrom, but I think he will play Glenn before Davis. Mm. And uh, mid, uh, your front four, Alec. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit off, off the ropes here. I'm going to put Diallo in. I'll go Diallo, uh, Ramsey, Kent, Morelos. Just a little bit worried that Morales might have picked up a, a knock that sees him out just for the weekend. I don't think it was anything big. But um, obviously, if he's fit, you want him playing. Yeah, and yourself, Brian? I think... Well, I'd like to see Sakala, Ramsey and Kent and Morales. But whether the Sakala absence was due to vaccination issues, I have no idea. But um, I would like to see... She's flashing back. I'm going to go. Oh, actually, like, my thing was the same as Alec. I think Diallo will play Ramsey, yeah. Kent. Morelos, I'm touching goal just because of the situation. I think I don't know if Gio might be saying if he's even got a slight knock. Let's yeah. rest him. I don't yeah. want to because I think when he plays with a totally different side up, especially up top, and then anybody else is up there because it gives you something totally different to another player we've got. So even a 90% Alfie would be playing in front of anybody else on our side and so we'll go to you Alex what's your score prediction and who's your goal scorer? Well what if I say <laughs> nil nil? <laughs> well with no goal uh, scorer? <laughs> um, I'll say I'll say 2-1 Rangers um, and rather than them being cheeky and going for both of our goal scorers I'm going to say Kent's going to get a goal and yourself Brian? Uh, uh... You can say 2-1. 2-0 Morelos. First goal. I'll say 2-1. I think it'll be very close. 2-1 or 1-0. I think it'll be, I think it'll be, I think it'll be very close. I'm going for Lundstrom again. I think he's in a roll and I think he's willing to shoot for outside the box, which sometimes you've not done for a while. And I think, see if you've got a chance. Just shoot. I mean, Ryan Jack done that against Celtic. The bar. He's not really, I think he's had a short since, but Lundstrom does like to have a dig and he, we can see he has got a good shot on him, so... Sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But rather you try a shot at times and recycle the ball and maybe end up breaking down. So I like that about a player. So I'm going to one million from the first goal. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining us this morning for the preview. And hopefully come Sunday evening, we're sitting in a position where we've won a game. We've won again and we're looking forward to Dortmund. So thank you, Brian. And Cheers, thank you, Alex. Cheers.